welcome to the virtual Lakewood Abbey tonight for our third annual Blessing the Earth Keepers service. This is a service that we have been doing to celebrate and support the work of people who consider themselves to be earth keepers who are employed in conservation, in animal rescue groups, who volunteer or support the same kind of organizations um, as a way of offering spiritual renewal and encouragement. And so we welcome you. This is the first time we've had to do this without a physical gathering of the full congregation. We're streaming from our lovely hosts, David and Christy Streeter, and we're so appreciative for them, uh, for their hospitality tonight. So let's get ourselves centered and begin the worship this evening. Come, let us dwell in God's shelter. Let us dwell in God's creation. Come, because the earth is the Lord's, and God's earth is our home. We, we live in God's world. We are, we are not alone. We share this life with the heavens and the earth, earth with the, the waters and the land, with the trees and grasses, with the fish, birds, and animals, with minerals and creatures of every form, and with all our brothers and sisters. God is good, and everything God makes is good. God is love, and everything God makes is love's fruit. Let us worship God. Our gathering hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful.
for being our vocalist this evening. Thank you so much for what you're bringing to this service. Thank you. The prayer for the day, let us pray. You are the living God who sustains all life in continually unfolding ways. And now may we open our ears to your continually unfolding word. You speak to us in new and vital and imperative ways. With all the power you have given us, let us be silent and open to listening for nourishment, for comfort, for challenge, and new focus. Amen. Amen. Genesis 1, verses 1 through 25. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created a great sea, monsters of every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. horsehair worm, a yard long and thin as a thread, whipping through the duck pond, or entangled with others of its kind in a slithering Gordian knot. Look at an overwintering ball of cloaca, 
above an overwintering ball of buzzing bees, or a turtle under ice breathing through its pumping cloaca. Look at the fruit of an Osage orange tree, big as a grapefruit, green, convoluted as any human brain. Or look at a rotifer's translucent gut, something orange and powerful is surging up and down like a piston, and something small and round is spinning in place like a flywheel. Look, in short, at practically anything. The coot's face, the mantis face, a banana, the human ear, and see that not only did the creator create everything, but the creator is apt to create anything. He'll stop at nothing. There is no one standing over evolution with a blue pencil to say, now that one there is absolutely ridiculous and I won't have it. If the creature makes it, it gets a step. Is our taste so much better than the creator's? Utility to, create, to the creature is evolution's only aesthetic consideration. Form follows function in the created world, so far as I know. And that creature that functions, however bizarre, survives to perpetuate its form. Of the intricacy of forms, I know some answers and not others. I know why the barbules on a feather hook together and why the Henley's loop loops, but not why the elm tree's leaves zigzag or why butterfly scales and pollen are shaped just so. But the, of the variety of form itself, of the multiplicity of forms, I know nothing, except that apparently anything goes. This holds for forms of behavior as well as design. The mantis munching her mate, the frog wintering in mud, the spider wrapping a hummingbird, the pine processionary straddling a thread. Welcome aboard. A generous spirit signs on this motley crew. Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. 
You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. <laughs> Reflections on Patience, Genesis 18, beginning at the 22nd verse. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked? Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I, who am but dust and ashes, suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, suppose forty are found there. He answered, for the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. 
Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham. And Abraham returned. In the Bucket by Anna LaPay. Coral reef die-offs, bomb cyclones, an historic wildfire blazes from the easternmost United States to the Pacific coast, Arctic ice melting faster than models predicted, persistent bigotry in the highest halls of government, rampant sexual harassment and abuse. The list of dismal news goes on and on. Up against it all, it's understandable that many of us feel that our efforts to build a better world are futile, like drops in a bucket. Or perhaps more precisely, we feel we're like a raindrop in the Sahara. Our efforts, our work, rarely, if ever, even touches the ground. It just evaporates. But perhaps we should rethink how we feel about our impact. What if we focused instead on how a drop in the bucket can actually be quite significant? We may never know if we are the first drop or the one that will cause the water to spill over the edge. Consider Dr. Wangari Matai, a Kenyan environmentalist who was the first woman to receive a PhD in biological scientists, sciences in East and Central Africa. In 1977, she planted seven trees in honor of seven women leaders. And with that one moment of symbolism, she birthed a movement that helped restore indigenous forests and empowered women in villages across the country by inspiring them to plant trees in their communities. Matai has since passed away, but the Greenbelt movement is still thriving. To date, it has planted over 51 million trees in Kenya, promoted a village-based democracy building, and been a model for other movements around the world. There is a kind of humility in this metaphor for social change. You likely will never know the full impact of your sole solitary drop in the bucket. But in that humility, there is liberation. Liberation to keep dreaming and keep fighting, even when the forces against you seem invincible. Thank you. 
reflections on comfort. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water. And I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Reflections on renewal, Psalm 36, beginning at verse 5. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Do not let the foot of the arrogant tread on me, for the hand of the wicked drives me away. There the evildoers lie prostrate. They are thrust down, unable to rise. A Garden Beyond Paradise by Rumi. Everything you see has its roots in the unseen world. The 
forms may change, yet the essence remains the same. Every wondrous sight will vanish. Every sweet word will fade. But do not be disheartened. The source they come from is eternal. Growing, branching out, giving new life and new joy. Why do you weep? That source is within you. And this whole world is springing up from it. The source is full. Its waters are ever flowing. Do not grieve. Drink your fill. Don't think it will ever run dry. This is the endless ocean. reflections on hope. A reading from Romans 8. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what, is, what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Uncertainty by Howard Zen. An optimist isn't necessarily a blithe, slightly sappy whistler in the dark of our time. To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. 
What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many, where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act, and at least the possibility of sending the spinning top of the world in a different direction. And if we do act, in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents, and to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, is itself a marvelous thing. of the readings, the kind of despair from Abraham and Solomon. Can there be 50 righteous, 40 righteous, maybe 10? And if you know the story, there weren't even 10. Then to hear the kind of playfulness of Wendell Berry and going down to the lake and realizing that the birds, the ducks, they don't worry about all of the things 
They don't have to worry about forethought and all the other things and that Wendell Berry came to peace and grace and hope. And then the final reading that just said, we need to live. We need to live as we think human beings should live. We need to start doing it now. And if we do it, we might increase the number and it ultimately will make a difference. It will make a difference. The drops in the bucket will overflow. Thanks be to life and to God. Amen. This is the point in the service where we traditionally invite people to come forward to receive a blessing and or to light a candle in celebration or commemoration of an important person or animal or event. But since we are not able to meet in person this year, we're going to ask Pastor John to pronounce a blessing and then just set aside a few moments for musical meditation, just to have some prayers within, within yourself. But Pastor John, thank you. May God, our Creator, bless and sustain your work, your work on behalf of all creatures and their homes, and give you rest and strength and endurance to continue. join together and pray as people who are reaching out on behalf of all creation. Let us pray. We offer you our thanks, Creator God, for this wonderful planet that is our shared home. During these Earth Days, 
We join with people from all around the world to lift up our hopes for the health and sustainability for your earth and for all that dwells within it. We have read the news, O oh God, and we have seen the evidence of local and global environmental destruction. We seek paths to healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up to our grief and frustration at the loss of species, loss of habitat, and spreading health problems that spring from pollution and climate change. Grant us wisdom to seek new ways of being and courage for difficult choices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We name and confess our personal involvement in the Earth's distress, in what we do and what we leave undone, in the products we buy and the services we use. We engage in actions and behaviors that take a toll on our planet and degrade our community. We ask your forgiveness, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are humbled and grateful for the work and courage of those who gave their lives in their efforts to bring environmental injustices to the world's attention, including Dorothy Stang, Chico Mendez, Ken Sarawia, Homero Gomez Gonzalez, Fermino Guajajara, Raimundo Guajajara, Paulo Paulino Guajajara, and Heron Bedoya, and the 12 brave rangers of Verona Park who were killed just this past Saturday, and countless others whose names we do not yet know. Help us to honor their sacrifice by keeping their causes alive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For who and what else this assembly might pray? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, God of the Exodus and Spirit of the Prophets, God made flesh among us in Jesus our Christ. Be with us. Do not allow us to turn away from pain and confusion that surrounds us. Call us now, as you always have, to be engaged and relevant to this moment in history. Call us to new visions, new understandings, and new relationships. Fill us with your deep forgiveness and lead us into life-giving hope. Grant us courage to face the challenges of this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Spirit of God, we rejoice that you have moved within us and enriched our prayer. By your grace and power, we are forgiven and made due. By your love, we find healing for our hurt, and we are called to bring healing to your creation. With hope and joy, we raise these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We will now pray the Lord's Prayer from the New Zealand Book of Prayer. If you downloaded the bulletin for this service, you will find it there, and we invite you to join us from wherever you are watching. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is is heaven, the hallowing of your name, echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth peace and freedom, to sustain our hope and comfort. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From the trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. What is it that you wish to know, O mortal one? Do you think you must ascend to the highest heaven or descend to the deepest pit? Do you not know that wisdom has pitched a tent in your midst? Ask the four-legged, and they will mentor you or the winged of the air, and they will school you. 
or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea inform you, who does not know that the gracious host has done this, and the blessed one's reach is the heart of every creature, the breath of every living thing. Brother Son declares the beloved's glory. His voice goes out over all the earth, his words to every inhabited place. Sister Moon and stars pour forth speech to brighten the night in splendor and counsel. Now hear the blessed promise of old made new in your hearing. May you go out in joy and be led back in peace. The hills bursting in song, the trees in applause.
extraordinary musicians, David Streeter, who just gets more inspired every year, Maria Jacobs, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Pastor John Bushko, thank you again for, for joining us this evening. And now, go forth, remembering God's promises and blessings, joyfully give back to the world the love you have received, believing that God loves all creation and abides with us. Amen. Amen.